Hey, it's MK and I am here with a stretch the sketch layout for you guys today. And today we are using the sketch from Christie's Beautiful Life 30 Days of Sketches. And it was created today by Miss Carrie. Um, I'm also combining this with Color Craze, the color combination that we picked out as this cool, um, almost ivory and gold and teal color or aqua color. So I've got these rub-ons that um, really gave me the idea for the aqua color and this intro is going to be quite long actually the whole video is long I'm sorry so I also pulled out these other rub-ons because there was multiple colors within them but I think I only end up using a few I'm also going to be combining my cut files that are for the VIP uh, bundle that is available in the scrapbook fun summit <laughs> I keep getting the words um, mixed up. But anyways, that goes live tomorrow, you guys. Not the summit, but the sale. I also am going to try to incorporate my, um, they're called print then cuts. Um, I've been using my cut aparts where you fussy cut them out, but now I'm going to be using my print then cuts and you can see the different sizes. I've also picked out a ton of 49 and market pieces from the Hike More collection. These little tree rounds were made from Minte. They weren't made. I fussy cut them out. I've got a chipboard from the um, Hike More collection by 49 and market. I have a leaf left over from my last advent calendar. Um, yeah, by the way, the advent calendars are going live today as well also from the moonlit collection i have a couple of my film strips left um, more little rub-ons and whatnot i'm just trying to get through all of the little pieces because i was tossing everything in this little tray <laughs> as i was seeing things from my February box from 2023, I have these hanging hearts. I didn't know how many I was going to use, so I just pulled all the ones that I had left over. Um, I think I have three big hearts and this little double heart. From the Scrapbook Addicts Etsy shop, I have this little tree um, border, but I broke it um, in uh, one spot, and I'm trying to figure out where it goes back on the <laughs> in the in the line, but once you glue it back together, you really can't even tell that it's broke. So I will be gluing that back together. It's not a big deal that it broke for me. It's my fault anyways, because I wasn't very, you know, nice with it. Um, I've also got some flare. These are like little mini epoxy flares from Scrap and Happy Studio. So I absolutely love these little tree ring flares. And then um, I've got more uh, hike more collections, chipboard pieces, laser cut pieces, just you name it. They're everywhere. Lots of these little tree rounds from uh, Minte. I pulled out this acetate piece because it had that aqua butterfly. And I'm trying to share with you guys where I can show it with um, and whatnot, but I thought it was pretty cool because it's in a glass jar and we are able to observe it while it's in its little jar. And that's pretty much what we are doing is we're in the glass jar observing the outside. Um, and so I thought it was appropriate, plus it was the right colors. I'm going to be using two of these doodle bug style uh, pocket pages. They've got one giant six by 12 on one side and then three uh, four by sixes on the other side. So I'm going to use them as a two page layout for my gold. I'm actually pulling in this, this wood grain. I don't plan on adding a whole lot of gold because I just felt like it was too much for my map paper. I'm going to be using, um, love ocean number nine, Jenny B blue, and then well blew me down all from shimmers to try to recreate that, um, aqua color with my matte paper and then I get all the different variations that's in the swirl in our um, in our uh, inspiration piece. I also pulled out this gorgeous piece from the Crafty Garden. It's called Swallowtail Spectacle, but I tried to find the bird. It's not on there. So I didn't understand why it was called Swallowtail. Anyways, um, is there a butterfly named Swallowtail? I don't know, but it's 49 and Market Crafty Garden. And I pulled it out of this collection pack. And while I was looking at the collection pack, I saw this striped paper that I think I might be able to, or be needing to pull out because I don't think I have enough paper 
um, especially across a two-page spread. All right, so I went into my uh, spray box and I sprayed my um, my map paper. I love how it dried. I just love the different variations um, that all the sprays plus the print um, added to it. It was a very thin paper. It is a very thin paper, um, so I had to be very careful not to rip it and whatnot, but it, it was perfect. It, it ended up being awesome. Now, of course, my <laughs> Dina Wakely Gold in Glitz, I think is what it's called. It doesn't spray. It never has. Uh, I think I tried once and that was about it. It's a pretty thick paint um, spray. And so I just dab it on and I was going to make my little thingies gold. And then what I did was I picked out some laser cut buttons from the 49 and Market Hike More collection. Um, I picked those because they're heart shaped and I was going to cover the heart with the buttons um, and then that way I have gold string because like I said, I could not find a gold that was this beautiful, I, it's almost like pastel. It I don't know how to describe it, you guys, but my gold is all yellowy gold. So uh, I really couldn't find one. All right, so I'm going to show you guys how I cut apart one side and I did end up having to go and get four pieces of this um, blonde cardstock. Again, this is representing my gold color because I didn't have a shiny gold in that specific shade. Um, but what I do is I, I cut everything out and I try to keep all of the pieces in the same pattern um so if it was a if it was more than a wood grain because the wood grain clearly can get mixed up and you're not even going to notice um but if it was a specific pattern you want to keep it in that pattern um, to make your page look cohesive and then uh, because this is single-sided i had to glue all my pieces down and then what i do is i glue everything down and then trim off the white space or the space that you don't want to see the print that's on the other side that you might possibly want to see i know i've explained this before but i also know that i get a lot of new followers a lot of new viewers sometimes only you know people that just stop by to see what's up um, things like that and so i really wanted to explain with you guys what it is that i'm doing um, but i keep both of the patterns whether it's on the back side or the front side. For this particular layout, I'm actually gonna ink all of my edges in this walnut stain, but I don't like doing it over my surface because then when I go to glue my photos, I end up getting a smudge or something, um, which I I show in another video where I did that, but I do ink off of my desk. Um, no, not just for pocket pages, but for everything. I don't like inking over my desk because it's it's like glitter. It gets everywhere and you can't see it. All right, plus me, two, two. I am so sorry, you guys. <laughs> that just came out of nowhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim down my photos and I'm gonna leave the white border on these six by four um, photos. I, these were my favorite photos. I love the fact that Janet's husband took a picture of us um, in the observation area. Well, it's not really, we're at a bar. <laughs> <laughs> or on in one of the bars um, on the top deck of this ship. And um, I, I just like the fact that we're all sitting there and, and viewing out and he and he caught us. I love pictures like that, you guys, where, you know, we're caught in the moment type of thing. So, but I do have a lot of three by four photos. And um, I realize that some of my photos are duplicates. So now I'm going to have a blank space. <laughs> Yay, go me. Um, and so I, I'm not really sure, but I, as, okay, what I do is I cut my photos apart first. And then once I have all the photos and the duplicates removed, <laughs> here's another duplicate right here. Oh my gosh. I, I did not realize I had duplicates, you guys. I'm so sorry. But once I have all my photos trimmed down and set up, I like to go through my photos and see if that's where the placement is that I like. Do I like this photo here? Do I like that photo there? Um, because what I did was I just stuck them in the pocket knowing that this group of photos is what's going to be together because of what is on my matching page for one of the sides over on the left and then the other matching page in my album. So when I stick these two pieces back in my album or page protectors, back in my album, I want to make sure that what's on the other side, because this is the two page spread right here, but what's on the other side matches what's on, you know, in my album already. So, 
Um, that's basically all that I'm doing. And then what I'm going to go do is cut out this gorgeous piece of paper for all of my three by four photo mats, which I have exactly 12. So that paper was completely eliminated and used. So I did need to bring in this striped paper. Um, I was hoping I could use this striped paper for the portion of the layout that I'm finally getting to. <laughs> Let's make a layout finally. Um, but I ended up having to use this striped paper. So uh, basically this six by 12 little panels that I have now, I'm going to treat them as if they're traveler's notebooks. Now I know that they're not, I think traveler's notebooks are six by nine. Um, I, I think, I don't even think they're six by nine. I think they're what, four by nine? Anyways, I have no idea. Um, but that's basically the shape that they are in. They're long and tall. So I'm going to shrink this whole, um, each side of the layout down to a six by 12 and um, pretty much ignore the fact that it's 12 inches. I'm going to shrink it down to six and then just work with what's in, uh, around my photos, basically. So I cut my panel down to where I could put all three of my photos within that panel. I know I didn't have four to make a grid, but I do like the fact that I have um, the three photos. And then if I bring that horizontal photo down, the smaller one, then I have a great spot for a title um, or a, a really good embellishment and whatnot. So um, I, I really do like that. I had to go into my scraps and pull out some white, um, just some white scraps. I definitely wanted to keep the borders all white so that way they pop off um, this uh, aqua color. Um, well, I don't think this one's even aqua. This one's more like a, a sandy blue. <laughs> <laughs> but it still works. It still goes with the color scheme. Um, like I said, that matte paper was my favorite. I love it. And it has a little sparkle to it because the vibes on that shimmers paint does have sparkle inside it. And then the colorings that I used did, did not have any sparkle, but it was overpowered by the vibes. And now my, my matte paper is kind of shiny. You really can't see it unless you start to play with it, but it's okay. So I'm going to cut out um, just random strips. I don't even pay attention. I, I, um, I'm not even measuring. I'm just cutting out, you know, little skinny strips, um, thick strips, things like that. I know I wanted the one strip that had the, um, uh, I think it's latitude because it's going horizontal. Um, so I think east to west is latitude. Um, I, I know I wanted to keep that, but then when I put it at the bottom where I originally wanted it, I was like, oh, well, now I can't even see it. So what do I do now? So I put it up at the top and I'm going to have the top one kind of peeking out, but then I don't like that either. So I'm going to dovetail all of these just like she has on hers. And at first I debated whether or not I was going to just cut the pieces and not have it go and span all the way across my page. Um, but then I realized I, it's such a small page. It'll be fine if I cut it down. My page is six inches. So I went ahead and I cut everything at five and a quarter or five and three quarters. That way the dovetails almost touch the edge. But then when I cut into the actual um, portion of the dovetail, like the inside portion, it wasn't too small to where it, it hid behind the photos. Does that make sense? So I really wanted to make sure that um, the banner pieces behind the photos were seen. So then I'm going to go ahead and pull out my rub-ons. Now I did not want to oversaturate my foot, my, my layout with all these banners. I wanted to tuck and weave a bunch of rub-ons so that way it looked a little airy and I had growth growing in between all these, um, all these panel pieces. So I only glued the, um, the banner pieces down in the center so that way I could lift up and be able to ink or not ink rub on um, a bunch of uh, cool rub ons within and then I marked around the photos um, on the on the mm, wood grain so that way I could see how far in to put the um, the rub ons and then what's going to be covered up so that way I can you know use it somewhere else because they're leaves right you never get enough leaves so why cover them up um, <laughs> especially when one leaf creates an impact. If, if I'm, if I'm not, you know, if I do say so myself, I mean, just one leaf peeking out somewhere works really well. It, it's, it's really cool. Um, 
but yeah, I, I wanted to make sure that I marked everything so that way I didn't go too far in, I didn't come too far out. I also like the fact that there's different shadings of these leaves so I could overlap them. I do have to say I have to rub a little bit harder because the rub-on does not like to be rubbed on top of another rub-on. So it did take a little bit more effort uh, to get um, to get the rub-on to stick to other rub-ons. But this is the longest process, I, I have to say, because it's, it's not something that I can pre-decide uh, whether or not I want you know, a rub on here or a rub on there. I did try to lay out multiple rub ons, um, but I had, I can't, I learned my lesson. <laughs> I can't lay a rub on on top of the plastic sheet of a rub on or it will instantly stick and then you don't have that rub on anymore. <laughs> I definitely learned that the, uh, learned that the hard way. Um, but I do try to put down multiple rub-ons before I just sit there and rub one at a time on to speed up the process. But it does become a very long process, especially when I'm not only doing this one side, um, but I have the back side to do as well. So I plan on doing this layout twice. I'm going to do it for this one here, which was my original idea. And then I forgot about the fact that I had another side. <laughs> So I was like, oh, this is going to be easy and it's going to be quick. And then I realized, well, what am I going to do for the other side? And I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to be perfect if I just did the exact same layout, but flip the pages and do opposite. So um, it's going to be fun, especially when they're not really going to be um, visible, if I might say, um, to each other. So I hope that makes sense. Um, so now I'm going to create a tab. Uh, just so that way I can, again, mimic what is on the layout. She's got a tab at the top of um, her left side page. And so I wanted to make a tab, but at first my tab is too, it's too long. So I had to shrink it back up. And I'm trying to uh, put the, 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 lati the latitude in the middle. So that way, or is it longitude? I want to say latitude goes lateral. Oh, anyways, I always get confused, especially the more I think about it. But I just wanted to make sure that it was up there. I thought it was a good, um, I, I thought it was a good addition, um, even though that was probably, I, I know for a fact, we're nowhere near that latitude because that's somewhere in Idaho. <laughs> but I thought it was a good, um, a good addition. And then for uh, my two pieces going at the top and the bottom, I decided to use a film strip, even though it is matchy matchy. Um, I really wanted to bring in those film strips. And then one last little thing I'm going to tuck and weave into the border strip are these little wood rounds, um, the minte wood rounds that I fussy cut out. Um, I think I took an entire piece of paper and just fussy cut out all these wood rounds for a... Um, for some mixed, uh, no, embellishments or something. I don't remember you guys, but I know I had a ton of these left over and I thought, oh, they're perfect because they match the background. It's almost like a smaller version of the larger background. So at first I thought I was going to put the word seek and then I found this timeless memory, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, the first photo, the first smaller um, vertical photo is of me and Janet's feet. And then I have just a picture of my feet. And then um, the bottom photo, uh, Janet's husband was nice enough to actually brave the outside because it was very windy, very cold. Um, and so he took all these gorgeous pictures um, from the outside. In fact, he actually convinced uh, my husband to go with him. And so he's got a couple pictures of him and my husband, which I thought was pretty cool too, because I'm too chicken when it comes to the cold and um, ended up just basically <laughs> staying on the inside. Okay, so now that those are done, I'm going to go ahead and work on the on the backside and do the exact same thing, but it's going to be a quicker process because everything is smaller. I have all smaller photos. These are just pictures of, um, technically they're glaciers, but it looks like floating ice. Um, but they are considered glaciers. I do want to repeat the exact same thing. So I'm going to take my um, scraps of paper and cut out a white border. That way the two photos, actually I had three photos that do have white borders on them. They didn't really stick out like sore thumbs. And I had a couple more photos that had white borders instead of um, not having enough paper to border all of my photos in that same print that I used before from Crafty Garden. 
I'm going to distress the edges because again, it's just something that I like to do on outdoor layouts. I just feel like it gives you that, um, that, that feel of the outdoors because nothing in the outdoors is soft. I mean, it looks soft and it's very beautiful. Um, the sun set or sunrise or the sun shine usually makes it look a little softer, but in the end, when you go to touch it, you know, it, it's rough. It, it has its own defense mechanism type of thing. Okay. So I'm, I was hoping because of these smaller photos that I was able to use the rest of this paper instead of having to cut a new panel. And I thought, oh, it's perfect. Yay. Um, if I get the pictures just right, it'll be absolutely perfect. I'm going to go ahead and finish off that, um, uh, that map print and cut it down um, again, random strips down to size. Don't even know how many I need or, or anything. Um, here, the first layout uh, of these photos, I'm just guessing, but I didn't like how low the bottom photo actually went um, because of how high, you know, how much of a border I have at the top, but I, I wanted uh, kind of the same border at the bottom. And so it took me a little bit. Again, going to cut out all of the dovetails um, or fishtails. I don't really know what the technical term is. I'm going to put all of these right in the middle. Um, again, ignoring the fact that these are six by 12s. Um, I, I didn't really want to expand this entire design all the way up 12 inches. Um, I really do like how much um, I can't really call it white space because it's wood grain space, but I really do like how much white grain there is, uh, or <laughs> white space there is. Um, and here, because my photo is going in the opposite direction um, of the uh, sketch, I decided that I will just flip the sketch and have all my banner pieces going up and down uh, because of the fact that it's my photo is going left, you know, left and right. So it just made sense to me. Um, I had another film strip, so I decided, oh, rinse and repeat. I'm going to put the exact same thing. Um, at first, I wasn't going to. I was going to make it completely different. And then I thought, no, I really, I'm going to do that. And my first set of thickers had the definition of observe. And I thought, oh, I'll use another one of those. Well, apparently, I already used it. So I had to pull out this Pebbles um, thicker or tile alphas to create the word observe, but I've already used all the E's. So I have to use the last two little threes um, to create the word observe, uh, just because that's what we are doing. And these, these pictures here from within our glass jar uh, are absolutely perfect. So I thought it was a great combination um, with, the, with the little jar and, and they were the perfect color, everything. It just, it was meant to be. So then I decided to add two more word definitions. Um, I think one says super and the other one said sunny. Uh, it didn't matter. It, in, in all honesty, it doesn't matter. Um, I just really wanted, again, to rinse and repeat. And for this one, I'm cutting out all of the little leaves um, because it's such a little cluster that I, I did fill in all the gaps. So now I don't have any gaps. Um, so I'm gonna have the leaves poking out from the bottom. Um, and then that way, uh, it's, it still looks like they're trying to overgrow out through the banner pieces, but yet, um, it's not exactly the same as the other side, which is fine because the other side is actually on the other side of the left page. So again, they, it's, it can be seen as a single page, but I, I don't know how to describe it. You guys, <laughs> in all honesty, um, I know one of the pictures that you guys um, only get to see in photos because this video became so long, I did not record doing the four by six pa um, panels um, because again, the video just got so long. But in the end, I do have a picture of what the pocket pages look like completed. Um, I just decided not to... Um, not to show that video because I mean, I'm already almost at 30 minutes. That's ridiculous. So here's where I bring in that hike more, um, rub on, uh, which I, I think these leaves came from spectrum Sherbert. Um, they were the, um, the tide one spec spec spectrum tide or something like that. Um, and, uh, so anyways, I think that's where the leaves came from. And then I added this one that, um, came from, 
the Hike More collection. It's the only one that I do end up adding. Now for this love, I really wanted, I like the fact that it says love this and I really wanted to put it um, partially inside this um, uh, frame, I guess is what it's called. But I, if I'm being honest, I, I really wanted to put it over on the bottom left, but none of my rub-ons are over on the bottom left. I did them the exact same way that I did uh, my other um, my other panel. And if I was thinking, I would have done them opposite, but I did not. Um, and so I, I just went with it. It's like, it's okay if I have three things in three corners um, and then I have a leaf in the other corner. So technically I have four things. Um, with these uh, epoxy flare, you can't add liquid glue. So I had to pull out my enamel dots and, um, and get that to cover up the 15, um, just because it looked a little dark, like it was, it was not vibrant, but it was solid black and it just looked a little darker than I wanted it. So I like that it's just barely peeking out. I'm going to finish it off with, um, these little wood rounds and a few little die cut pieces I am super happy with how these pages turned out, you guys. I really do like this sketch completely shrunk. Um, I, I really, really do. So here are the close-ups. Um, like I said, I've got lots of photos coming up as well. Um, I'm just basically celebrating the fact that I am going to be part of the Scrapbook Fun Summit this year. Um, it starts on November 6th. Tickets go live tomorrow, you guys. So I'm super excited. Uh, I've got a couple more videos where I talk about it. I am so sorry if I sound like a broken record, but I know that um, some people don't watch every day. Uh, I don't even video every day. I'm sorry. I need to get back into that habit. Um, but I'm sharing several different ways of how these pieces can be used, um, not within, not just within pocket pages. Uh, that was what they were made for, but it's not just for pocket pages. Um, they are part of the VIP bundle. So the summit itself is free, but the bundle, the VIP bundle um, is, is a little bit of a cost just to help um, support the, um, the, teachers, right? So here's the pictures where they are completed and everything is within their album. This is again our color craze. Don't forget to stop by Janet Fritz's channel who is Galaxy Girl Creations. She is my partner in crime in color craze and also the owner of Stretch the Sketch. That was all her brainchild as well. Um, Miss Carrie, thank you so much for such an amazing sketch today. Don't forget to check out all the links that I have. I've got um, a playlist for Stretch the Sketch, a playlist for Christy's Beautiful Life, 30 Days of Sketches, as well as Christy's Facebook group, um, and then the album that um, this sketch is located in. So that way you can go and find the sketch and look at the comments and see uh, everyone else that is not on YouTube playing along with this sketch as well. All right, you guys, again, thank you so much, and I will check y'all later. Bye. Bye.